Okay. Today we're going to be looking in the New Testament in our midweek teaching. Paradise Now Church, the Book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 1, Verse 1. The former account I made, O the Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles, whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria and the end of the earth. And I believe our last verse is our primary verse. Verse 8. Verse 8 is our primary verse. And the title of our message today is Holy Ghost Grin. Holy Ghost Grin, G R I N. And looking at verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the, to the end of the earth. So when the power of the Holy Ghost has come upon a person and come upon us, and especially came upon me, when the Holy Ghost came into my life, I had this power. I was introduced to this power of God in a lot of things. Uh, this power is manifesting and Habakkuk chapter 3 um, if we would turn there to Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 3 in the Old Testament. Um, it says there, just zip over there to Habakkuk. All my pages are sticking together 
this morning. Glory to the Lamb. Habakkuk chapter 3. Um, Habakkuk explains there, though everything has turned pear-shaped, Habakkuk 3.17, though the fig tree may not blossom, there's no fruit on the vine. Labour of the olive has failed. The fields yield no food. The flocks cut off from the fold. There's no herd in the store. Yet I have. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He still had this this joy. He was still rejoicing. Because God was his strength. And that is our strength today as disciples of the Christ. Our strength is the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It's a powerful thing. It's a power that comes with the Holy Spirit. The disciples returned with joy after going out and they were amazed demons answered to them and the healings and the miracles and this joy of the Holy Spirit and even though they suffered, the apostles and the disciples of Jesus, even though they suffered, they still had the joy of the Holy Ghost to bring them through. And some time back, a police officer, Sergeant Doug Phillips, uh, met me on the street early morning and uh, he, he was so blessed that I would be on the street so early in the morning, four or five o'clock in the morning, reaching out to the lost with this Holy Ghost grin on my face. Right? And that's the title of our message today, The Holy Ghost Grin. The Holy Ghost grin. And Sergeant Doug, who is a, of the Church of Christ denomination and is at police headquarters in Roman Street, Brisbane, he wanted to testify, so he, he wrote out a letter for me and it said this. Another new day is here where work, community and personal events will present themselves and create the daily challenge. It's a very cool winter's morning. Actually, he says here, it's 620 a very cool winter's morning, and the sun struggles to rise above the city landscape. There, on a street corner, a figure of a person, small in stature but big in heart, smiles and greets all who would pause a moment. I experience an uplifting of my heart and soul as a God-filled smile shares this day with me. For you see, a smile, a God-filled smile is. And then he deconstructs the word smile. And this is what the word smile meant 
for Sergeant Doug. He said the S is for Saviour who has forgiven my sins. S is for Saviour who has forgiven my sins. Isn't that something to smile about? Hey? Does, do not the scriptures say that blessed is the man and the woman whose sins have been forgiven? And that blessed means heavenly happy. <laughs> Oh, yes. I have a lot to grin about. I have a lot to smile about. And, and the disciples of Jesus have a lot to smile about because our sins have been forgiven. A young man last Sunday, Brother Treman, he had his sins forgiven and he was rejoicing. Hey? Okay? He was smiling on Sunday. S is for Saviour who has forgiven my sins. See, when the Holy Ghost comes, when the Holy Ghost comes, I believe when a man or a woman repents of their sin, truly repents, the Holy Spirit comes. I believe Holy Spirit hovers over the individual. This is a hypothetical. Hovers over that person and when they genuinely repent, he comes in, he enters in. On true repentance. God moves in. So Sergeant Doug Phillips, he said, The S is for Saviour who has forgiven my sin. The M is for my acknowledgement that Jesus is Lord of my life. M is for my. If we acknowledge then that Jesus is Lord and Lord of our lives, I tell you, we'll be bursting with joy. The Lord will make sure of that. All right? Look at Habakkuk. It was all turning pear shame. Even though we're talking about a fig tree, it was all turning pear shame, wasn't it? The fig tree wasn't blossomed, there was no fruit on the vine, the labour of the olive had failed, flock was cut off on the farm, there's no herd in the store. Yet he was still smiling, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. He was still smiling, he still had a Holy Ghost grin. Because God was his strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of knowing Jesus was his strength. The joy of knowing God. It's a great joy. It gives us a constant smile. Hey? Take the world, but give me Jesus. Let me have his constant smile. Hey? And when you do, you'll be smiling. You'll, be, you'll have that Holy Ghost grin. I can't forget ever an Aboriginal brother. It was about 27 years ago. He came to me and received literature the printed word off me and my testimony face to face in up in central Queensland this is about 27 years ago this is not the Aboriginal that introduced me to Jesus and brought me to the Lord this is another guy I left my hometown and and went to Toowoomba and then I went back. The Lord took me back. 
to my Jerusalem. And I ministered there, and this, I was on the street corner outside one of the pubs, and he was standing across the road. And I was watching him take a, a, a step forward and then a step back. A step forward and a step back. And all of a sudden, he just came from across the road and he said, Hey, brother. He said, I, I've been standing over there listening. And he said, You know, I had to come over because of your smile. Well, even my smile, I give the glory to Jesus. And I put it under the Holy Ghost grin. He had to come over. He couldn't resist. Eh? Could not resist. The power of the Holy Spirit. And I, then I had opportunity to minister. But it was just that smile. Now, that's being witnessed. Uh... A decade later, a decade after, after that, I get this uh, handwritten letter from a sergeant of police at police headquarters. Um, he said he experienced an uplifting of his heart and soul as a God-filled smile shared the new day with him, hey? This is what it's all about. It's all about bringing that glory to Jesus because we wouldn't have the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit wouldn't be available to us without Jesus dying on that tree. He had, that was the, the, the steps brought us to the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And uh, as it says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Witnesses. We witness Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. I couldn't do it otherwise. There's no way in the world. This, I'm moving into my 31st year ministering, witnessing for Jesus worldwide. Just came back with my wife from New York City two-week crusade there, solid day and night. I couldn't do it. This is the longest job I've ever had. 31 years this coming June, June 2018. 31 years. Look, I tell you, I was in and out of jobs. You, you wouldn't believe it if I told you how many jobs I've had in the secular before I came to the Lord when I was 30 year old. And I put it down to the power of the Holy Ghost. Longest job, longest period of time I've ever stayed in the one work, the work of the Lord. Nearly 31 years. And so I have to glorify Jesus again today. I have to praise him. I have opportunity to. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Then you're able to witness. We're not to go anywhere, are we? And... Uh, We're not to go anywhere until we're endured with that power. 
because otherwise we're just wa wasting our time and laboring in vain. So <clears throat> here we have totally two different people, an Aboriginal brother in a central Queensland city and we have brother uh, Sergeant um, Fillers of police headquarters a decade later saying the same thing and uh, deconstructed the word smile S-M-I-L-E the S was for Saviour, the Saviour who has given, forgiven my sins. The M is for my acknowledgement that Jesus is Lord. We have to acknowledge that. Lord of my life. And the I is for the reminder I have Jesus with me each step of the way. And Jesus is with us every step of the way providing we are with him. Hey, that's the kicker. That's the big one. Are we with him? Hey? He's with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But how many leave Jesus? We know many leave Jesus. We know that. We, we read it last Sunday in John chapter 6. And the verse was 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. And that's when Jesus turned to Peter, didn't he? And he asked him if he wanted to move on. So Jesus is no desperado, is he? <laughs> Trying to keep people fenced in to some local church trying to keep people uh, in the church I mean if people don't want to be there I, I, I offered or to pay their taxi fare to leave you know it's up to them if we're going to walk with Jesus it's got to be love if we're going to give it's got to be love if we're going to minister it's got to be love it's got to be all under the heading of I do this because I'm in love with Jesus I do this because I'm uh, spirit filled and spirit led I do this because I have the power of the Holy Ghost to witness my wonderful Saviour John 6.66 from that time, many, oh, many, how many? Many of his disciples went backward. And as Sergeant Doug said, I is, is for the reminder I have Jesus with me every step of the way, each step, of, and, he, and we do. But are we with him? We don't want to be going back. Hey? Because of a misunderstanding. All these disciples, many disciples backslid because of a misunderstanding. Because their hearts weren't right. They didn't know what Jesus was talking about, eating his flesh and drinking his blood. But anyway... S-M-I-L. The L is for the love that God has for each and every one of us. Well, God so loved the world, he gave his son. You can't give a bigger gift, can you? You can't outgive God. God gave his son, then call him Jesus. He came and died up upon the tree. 
He gave his life, his life a ransom. Now life is worth the living just because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, and now I know, I know, I know, Jesus is my future, and life is worth the living, just because he lives. His name is Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that something to smile about? If you don't have a Holy Ghost grin after singing that little chorus. I doubt if you're saved. I doubt if you know the Saviour. He's so beautiful. I have to smile all the time. He makes me smile every minute of the day. When I hear the people's problems, and I see the way they handle it and handle things and their problems. I think to myself, Jesus, you're so wonderful and you're so great. I think to myself, Lord, if only they'd humble themselves and repent. That's part of believing, isn't it? Humbling ourselves and repenting. It's a very humbling thing to truly repent. Turn away from our sin. Because sinning is a pride thing. It's a self thing. It's an endemic thing. It's an I know better than God thing. God gave his son. They call him Jesus. I have Jesus with me every step of the way. God Almighty loves me. He loves you. He loves his disciples. Okay? Let's read it in John. John 14. And the verse is 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him too and manifest myself to him. See? It's not as easy as we think. It, if we keep his commands, we do what Jesus says, he loves us and Father does too. John fourteen twenty three. Jesus said again, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And then my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. <laughs> Doesn't that make you grin? Doesn't that make you smile? I'm not talking about a president or a king. I'm not talking about Queen Elizabeth. I'm not talking about the Sheik of Araby or the Sheik from Scrubby Creek. I'm talking about Jesus here. I'm talking about Father. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the Spirit of God. The Ancient of Days. The Rock of Ages. Yahweh Seboth. 
Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm talking about the great I am, the greatest of the greatest, the undisputed champion of the universe, Jesus and Father. Come on. If that don't put a smile on your dial, I don't know if anyone can put a smile on your dial. Right? God gave his son. They call him Jesus. He came and died. Up upon a tree. They should change that, you know, to Father. Father gave his son. They call him Jesus. He came and died half upon the tree. He gave his life a ransom for you and for me. Now life is worth the living. It's worth living now. It wasn't before. I can't live if living is without him. I can't live if living is without Christ. I can't live. I can't live anymore. S-M-I-L-E. Sergeant Doug deconstructs the word smile in his letter to me. In his testimony, the L is for the love God has for each and every one of us, and the E is for the encouragement God gives through a smile from people like the street side figure. He called me a street side figure. <laughs> oh, that's all right, isn't it? That's not getting too bad. Street side figure. Hmm. They called Jesus the lowly Nazarene, didn't they? Anything good come out of Nazareth? The lowly Nazarene. E is for the encouragement God gives through a smile from people like the street side figure. God, it was encouraging Sergeant Doug on the street that morning as he was heading to into work, the headquarters, police headquarters. Right? And uh, then Sergeant Doug thanked me. He wrote at the end, Thank you for sharing that smile, Pastor Paul. And may we all keep on smiling for him. Well, if we love Jesus, we won't have to try and smile. It'll just be there. It'll just manifest. When Christ manifests in us and to us, as it says in John 14, 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. That's something to smile about. Christ manifested in you and me. You'll be smiling then. You'll have the Holy Ghost grin then. No doubt about that. You'll have that Holy Ghost grin. Because when you have the power, uh, when you have that power of the Holy Ghost in your life, you can't help, look, you can't help but grin. You, you, You can't help but Walk by faith. 
you can't help but trust in the Lord with all of your heart leaning not on your own understanding he takes the heat of when the Holy Ghost comes when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives he, he dissects and uh, divides and he arranges our lives and uh, properly places priorities and and uh, Holy Spirit writes out our must do list and he does all that when the Spirit comes. These are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit of God. Okay? These are the sons. And when he's leading, you're grinning. He leads, you grin. If he don't lead, you grimace. If he don't lead, I tell you, you won't be happy. You won't have this heavenly happiness. <laughs> As I'm ministering this message this morning, I look through a gap in the curtain and I can see a tree in the distance and a white cockatoo just landed there. <laughs> oh dear. Amazing, isn't it? Isn't it, the Lord is so amazing, but I'm grinning again, I'm grinning again. The white cockatoo, you know what I've said about the white cockatoo, he's considered the prophet, the watchman who overlooks the field and if any farmers are coming, while the others are having a feed, the other birds, he'll warn them. Yeah. So, um, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, And he said to them, It is not for you. Or better still, let's start in verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? I mean, his answer was pretty clear, wasn't it? Verse 7, it is not for you to know times or seasons which Father has put in his own authority. Because Jesus, he ain't bothering himself about times and seasons. Why should you? Hey? Why should you be bothered about times and seasons? And, and when he's going to restore the kingdom and everything else. Right? We need to just stick with the plan that the Lord has for us, his disciples. And we need to zero in on that. Right? It is not for you to know times and sin. Just get on with it. Just walk on in the Spirit. Hey? Walk on in the Spirit. Go forward in the Lord. Go in the strength of the Lord. And you'll be grinning all over the place. Hey? So... Our message today is the Holy Ghost grin. The Holy Ghost grin. It's there. That the Holy Spirit uplifts that individual. The individual starts grinning, starts smiling. Others get the overflow. Others are encouraged. 
how many people have said to me in the last 30 years, what are you smiling about? Or what are you so happy about? Hey? And then I've had opportunity to minister to them and tell, tell them clearly. And explain to them that I have the Almighty God in my life and in my indwelling. Indwelling. I said to that Aboriginal guy 27 years ago, and he was going on how you got such a beautiful smile, such a wonderful smile. Across the road, it was so looked so powerful. I said, and I'm thinking to myself, just a smile. What's he on about? But then, I said to him, listen. I give the glory to the Lord Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ in me. That's who I give the glory to. And explain to him that he could have the, the Holy Ghost grin too. He could have the Spirit of God in dwelling, and the power. The power of the Holy Ghost will give you the ability, the strength to smile in the most miserable of times. The most miserable of heartache. And when when things have just turned sour and and you're just not being treated with justice. You, you, you're being persecuted for doing no wrong. Hey? Well, the Spirit of God and of glory will rest upon thee. Hey? Hallelujah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And it'll... The Holy Spirit will just well up in you through faith. And you'll just be smiling all over the place. Hey? You'll be rejoicing. The joy of the Lord is our strength. He gives me living waters and I thirst no more. So you see in Acts 1 7, he takes the heat off. It's not for you to be bothering yourself about times and seasons and what I'm going to do with my kingdom. Hey? It, it, it takes all that heat off, that weight. The poor old endemic humans, you know, the unsaved. And even the saved who don't walk by faith. <laughs> They're struggling along there. They're struggling along. And uh, they're all worried. They're all worried about what's going to happen tomorrow and this and that. And the Lord says, don't worry about tomorrow. It's got its own issues. Forget about yesterday. What's on the plate today? What, what's going down today? Let's sort this today. Let's do a good job of today. In the Lord. Hey? You just be you in Christ. Let's do a good job of today. Let's not be like the world and get all bogged down in something of the past a hundred years ago or something that might happen tomorrow or might happen the next day we have to learn to settle down and be established in the Lord Jesus okay? be established in the Christ and seize the moment because we have a great inheritance awaiting us as joint heirs with Jesus as part of the family of God because we're part of the family 
the family of God. We're born of his spirit and we're washed in his blood. We're joined as with Jesus as we travel along. We're part of the family, the family of God. I, I have to smile. I have to laugh when I read that scripture. I think it's Ephesians. Joint heirs with Jesus. Joint heirs with Jesus. The inheritance of the Christ is infinite. It can't be counted. Infinite. And that's something to grin about, isn't it? <laughs> when someone's boasting about winning a lotto for five hundred and ninety million dollars or something, I just jump in and say, "Well, I'm an infinite heir, not a billionaire, trillionaire, infinite heir. There's no lotto that can offer you streets of gold to live on." and the goal's transparent. Where are you going to get that in the lotto? Where are you going to get that in the golden casket? <laughs> like in the New Jerusalem, eh? in the glory. Streets of gold, and the gold is transparent. I tell you what, you'd want to be smiling, wouldn't you? You're laughing all the way. I can't stop grinning. Just got to think of Psalm 23. Hey? That's enough. Psalm 23. You can feed on that all week. The Lord is my shepherd. I have no one. He lays me down in green pastures. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Well, that's what it's going to be like when you're with him. You might be living in the dirt, but it's still green pastures. By faint. Huh? He steers me beside the still waters. He, he, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Thou art with me. Ticking every box there. We got all, we got everything at our fingertips. He sorted it all. Jesus done it all for me. Hey? Up there upon the train. Gave up the ghost and gave me the victory. Nailed it all to the, the, the cross. Finished it. He, he's done it all so we can grin. <laughs> hey? All has been accomplished there. Nailed it all to the tree. All of our sins accounted for, you see. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Boom, ba -da, ba -boom, ba -boom. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus done it all for me. Jesus done it all for me. Jesus done it all for me. Nothing was left undone. Don't ever let the devil lie to you and think that oh Jesus missed a bit here you know you, you sort of mow on the lawn and you get distracted and you miss a piece <laughs> Jesus ain't missed nothing all, is, all has been accomplished nothing's been left undone the temple veil was torn in two opened up the door of faith for me and you that's it 
something to grin about. The way churches go on today and the way they teach and the way the congregations that I meet anyway, so-called Christians that I meet, anyway, I think that there's something to be done. We're still waiting for Jesus to do something, deliver us from our sin. Eh? Waiting for some revival so we don't go on in our sin. Ain't no, no, look. There's only one revival that will ever last, and that's true repentance. <laughs> There's only one revival that will ever last, and that's true repentance. And then I tell you what, you'll be grinning. You'll have that Holy Ghost grin when you repent. I mean, so much locked up in that Repent and be forgiven. It's so huge. One small line. Repent and be forgiven. Jesus' last words before he went home to Father. Repentance and forgiveness must be preached to every nationality in the name of Jesus, starting in Jerusalem. So, so much locked up in that. It, it, it's a treasure chest on its own fully loaded can I tell you <laughs> hey it's something to grin about hey I mean I, I, I smile without ceasing it's because of him in me let's have a look at John have a look at John chapter 16. Jesus done it all for me up there upon the tree. Here we go. Now I'll do the cross, finish it for you and me. John 16:33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble, tribulation. But be of good cheer, smile, I've overcome the world. <laughs> hey, smile. Get that Holy Ghost grin happening. Hey. Don't be down, be glory bound. These things I have spoken to you. It's the scriptures. The word, his word, he's given us. So that we'll have peace in him. But if the word of God does anything for me, it gives me peace. It settles me. Makes me smile. Makes me rejoice. When the Spirit of the Lord is in my heart, I will sing like David sang. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing like David sang. I will sing, I will sing. I will sing like David sang When the Spirit of the Lord is in my heart I will smile like David smile When the Spirit of the Lord is in my heart I will smile like David smile I will smile, I will smile, I will smile Like David smile there was a guy, he ran a barber's shop, and he said to me, he used to see me all the time, smiling. This is only in the last 
six months. He said, I see you all the time. This person's so joyful. That was the Holy Ghost grin again. I just walked by his barber shop and I was just smiling. I had the Holy Ghost all over me, you know. But then he got to know me and then I told him the truth and he rejoiced. It was sort of like um, John the Baptist, you know. They... Uh, They rejoiced in in uh, John the Baptist's message for a season, <laughs> and then I I reckon the penny dropped, you know, and that's what happened. That's when that's when everything turns pear shape, hey? When the penny dropped. And um, the reality strikes home. And people realize, hey, I have to attend to this and I have to attend to that. And for most of the time, people don't want to attend to what the Lord has pointed out in their lives. You know what I mean? So, many rejoiced. Many rejoiced in John the Baptist, who, words, who, who wasn't a Baptist for a season. That's in the writings of John chapter 2. Also, uh, we read there in John chapter 2 verse 10. Speaking of Jesus and uh, being born. <laughs> I like that when they... And they said in John 2.10, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, to Jesus, not to each other. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh—not like they do today. Hey, and uh, how wonderful that Jesus came to save us from us. <laughs> hey. And then we go over to Luke 2. we just done Matthew 2.10. Then we go to Luke chapter 2. Uh, verse 34. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. See, they start off rejoicing, don't they? Right. Jesus was for the rise and the fall of many. 
And when Mary, the mother of the man, Jesus, would see what they had done to Jesus and eventually do to Jesus, I tell you, it is written, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And that's Jesus in a teacup, isn't it? <laughs> he, he, when you th throw Jesus at someone and you put Jesus to someone, you, the hearts are revealed, don't they? The real Jesus, the crucified Christ. And I even grin about that. I have a Holy Ghost grin when I tell people the truth and they're jumping up and down, it, it nearly exploding. And then about a month later, you see the same people in the street and they don't want to know you. And I think, dear, oh dear. I start grinning. I start smiling. And I think, wow. It's just exactly what Jesus said. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That, they'll rejoice for a season. But the genuine will stay on to the end. The genuine stay on to the end. Jesus done it all for me. Up there upon the tree. Down to the cross and finished it for you and me. All has been accomplished there. Nailed it all to the tree. All of our sins are counted for, you see. Hallelujah. To the Lamb. Hallelujah. To the Lamb. Everything concerning you. Everything concerning me. Gave up the ghost and gave us the victory. Nothing's been left undone. The temple veil was torn in two. Opened up the door of faith for me and you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That's something to smile about. It's all finished. It's all done. Receiving that power of the Holy Ghost. That Jesus may be fresh in our lives every day. Fresh, fresh, whole new way of living. Whole new way of life. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Jesus the Christ. From this time forward and forevermore. So, our message today, the Holy Ghost grin. What do the scriptures say? Hey? In the writings of 1 Peter... If we just go over to 1 Peter for a minute, glory to the Lamb, and we'll have a quick look there in 1 Peter. And uh, 1 Peter, one Peter, chapter 1, verse 8. Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with 
joy inexpressible and full of glory <laughs> hey oh hallelujah I'll read that again having not seen Jesus you love though now you do not see him yet through faith you rejoice you're smiling all over the place you rejoice we look at this double emphasis here actually it, it it's triple emphasis you rejoice then it says with joy that's two inexpressible is three and then full of glory so it's quad Quadruple. It's not triple emphasis, it's quadruple. Rejoicing with joy inexpressible, full of glory. That's the Holy Ghost grin. <laughs> and it happened by believing, that's by faith. Hey? See, when you have biblical faith, we do. We don't have to see anything. Right? We're rejoicing about the salvation. 1 Peter 1 9. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. That's the end of the faith, that's not the beginning. That's not the middle bit. That's the end of your faith. Receiving the end. You've got to have a genuine faith. 1 Peter 1 7. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold. That perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to praise, honour and glory at the revelation. Of Jesus Christ. Well, what do you reckon about that? Hey? The genuineness. It has to be genuine. Hey? When it's genuine faith, when we're genuinely walking by faith, in the Son of God, you will have the Holy Ghost grin. There, there's no question about it. Hey? You will, by faith, understand and know without any doubt whatsoever that Jesus done it all for you. Hey? He done it on a tree, on a cross. That's where it all happened for you. And all these miserable interruptions of the devil have been dealt with. Even those in another three years, if we still breathe, they've been dealt with too. But it's so sad that people live their lives without that information and revelation that it's all finished all the issues he'd done it once and for all he's he's nailed it to the tree it comes back to a Christos attitude, not anti-Christ attitude, anti-truth, but a Christos attitude. Putting on the mind of Christ, looking forward, that Jesus counted it all joy to be slaughtered 
for us because he's seen the end result that the, then we could be saved from sin, self, Satan, and the wrath to come and hell for her. Doesn't that put a grin on your face? A smile on your doll? And Sergeant Doug said, keep smiling. I said to him, I can't help it. It's part of my DNA. <laughs> hey? It's part of my DNA that I would be smiling every day because every day is a jubilee day when the sun has set you free. Every day is a jubilee day when the sun has set you free. If the Son of God has set you free, free you'll be indeed. Oh, every day is a jubilee day when the sun has set you free. If the Son of God has set you free, Free you'll be indeed, oh Jubilee, oh Jubilee, if the Son of God has set you free, free you'll be indeed. If Jesus has set you free, and he will if you abide in his word, John 8, 30-33, if you abide in his word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. What I told you this morning, this morning is the truth. In him you'll have peace. It's the truth. In him you'll rejoice. You'll have power. You'll have a Holy Ghost grin. Hey? You'll experience an uplifting of your heart and soul. And God will put a God-filled smile on your face, on your dial. Hey? Just like our Sergeant Doug, who experienced an uplifting of his heart and soul. You can't buy that in the shop. You can't get that from religion. <laughs> hey? You can't get that from religion. The Lord Jesus, hey? The Lord Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, Saviour and Deliverer. He came that we may have life and have life in abundance. Don't be governed by the world, possessions, what you have, what you don't have. Don't be governed by and manipulated by people and people's opinions, rotten religions, <laughs> hey, orthodox businesses. Don't be governed by the one world church or the one world government. Don't be governed by the fear tactics of the devil. Fear no man. Fear nothing. Fear God. Fear Jesus who can take your soul and your body and put them in hell for eternity. Hey? Fear God and keep his commands. This is man's all. Hallelujah. <laughs> How wonderful. I tell you what, I can't open the Bible without smiling because as soon as I open the Bible, I haven't even read anything. I know he's going to say something. I know he's going to show me something. I know I'm going to walk away a better man. I know I'm going to become more pliable in his hand. I know I, I, I'm going to be enriched. <laughs> I know I'm going to find some more treasure that I can 
give to my brothers and sisters. <laughs> hey? I'm a real treasure hunter. Hey? I'm a real treasure hunter. The Holy Ghost always leads me to heavenly treasure and says, look at that. Yeah, wow, I can't wait to give that to Brother John. Hey? Wow, look at that. Can't wait to share that. Can't wait to give that one to Sister Mary Lou or whatever. Can't wait to bless him with your brothers and sisters and the lost and your enemy. Can't wait to bless him with something from heaven. <laughs> Holy Ghost green, eh? Glory to the Lamb. Well, I hope that everyone listening to this message today goes away smiling to themselves. And sometime during the day, someone will say, what are you smiling about? And you'll be able to tell them. Look, I heard this message called the Holy Ghost grin. And it really opened up some very major points that were actually so simple, you'd never think of it. <laughs> hey? And uh, that the listeners will share this message and invite others. And tell others to get on and listen to the message at uh, on our YouTube Jovi six seven nine J U V Y six seven nine. That's my wife's name, Jovi. Spelt J U. Pronounced J O. It's written J U V Y but it's pronounced J-O-V-Y. So it's J-U-V-Y-679. That's our YouTube address. You get on there, I tell you, you'll be smiling all over the place. There's good testimonies of the brethren. There's good attacks on there where I've been attacked for speaking the truth. I've been attacked for smiling. <laughs> I've been attacked for smiling, you know. Because I've had a Holy Ghost grin on my face. Someone's attacked me from behind. Hey? Yeah, what sort of coward is that? From behind. Dear, dear. And so the Lord has continued to uphold me through his word and by the power of the Holy Ghost. He can do it for me. He can do it for you. No problem whatsoever for the Lord. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, Amen and Amen. Thank you, Jesus.